welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new yoga class. Today we are going to be practicing a power vinyasa flow with a tutorial for crow pose or bakasana towards the end. If you have a yoga block, it may come in handy during the flow, so go ahead and grab it and place it at the top of your mat. If you don't have blocks at home, you can always substitute with a hardcover book. So we'll get started laying on our backs, coming into reclined butterfly pose bending the knees and bringing the soles of the feet together. Place both hands over your belly and right away start to connect with your breath. Connecting with your belly and bringing awareness to your power center, feeling the space here expand and contract. Today we'll be working on really cultivating a strong core so if you've practiced with me in the past, you have probably heard me cue this before, drawing the navel in towards the spine. Now what this does is it activates the abdominal muscles and it engages the core. So as you focus on your breathing here, I encourage you to start to work on activating your core muscles. Draw the low belly in, but keep the breath long and steady. So sometimes we have a tendency to hold our breath when we're doing core work. So try to keep the breath long and smooth. Go ahead and take three last deep breaths here. on your last breath go ahead and slowly bring the hands underneath the knees and draw the knees together you're going to lift the feet up off of the mat so the legs are straight out in front of you go ahead and point and flex the feet you can find circles here just getting some mobility in the ankles, rolling out the joints. Now finding stillness here, but keeping the legs extended and placing the hands underneath the glutes. We're going to move through some core work here. So taking a big breath in through the nose. As you exhale, lower the right leg down hovering the heel a few inches off of the mat. Inhale, lift the right leg up. Exhale, lower the left leg. Inhale to lift. Exhale, right leg lowers. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower left leg. Good, inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Last one here. Exhale, left leg. Inhale. Now we're going to lower both legs at the same time. Take a big breath in. Exhale, lower the legs. Inhale. And exhale. Keep your core active and engaged. Keep the breath long and steady. Good. Inhale here. And then we're going to exhale. Five. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale, last one. Exhale for one. Inhale, lift the legs, bend the knees, and hug the knees into the chest. Placing the hands on top of the knees, gently rock up and down, massaging the spine, and then rocking yourself up, crossing the ankles, planting the hands, coming into tabletop pose. 
making sure that the knees are hip width distance apart and the hands are underneath the shoulders. Now, starting with a nice strong foundation here, spread the fingers nice and wide and really press into the palms of the hands. You'll start to notice that the main knuckle joints lift up off of the mat, and this is exactly the suction-like shape that we want. This is also called spider fingers, and this is really helpful for gripping the mat and having a nice solid foundation, and this will come in handy when we break down crow pose later on. So from here, start to shift your body weight forwards. So you're shifting so that the shoulders are past the wrists. Putting almost all of your weight on your hands here. Just gently warming up the wrists, getting a feel for what it's like to put more pressure in this area. Try to keep the core engaged, navel in towards the spine. Good, now from here, start to round through the upper back. Draw the shoulder blades apart, finding this crow-like shape. Good, and then start to shift forwards and backwards. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Okay, go ahead and tuck the toes, sit on the heels, and just shake out the wrists here for a second. When you're ready, place the hands back down, coming into tabletop pose, and then flip the wrists so the fingers are going to be facing the knees. Shift your body backwards towards your heels, getting a nice deep stretch in the wrists. You can keep the arms straight or you can bend the elbows. Just go as far as it feels comfortable for you. Good, and then we're going to flip the wrists so that the fingers are facing out long ways of the mat. Start to find circles here. Shifting your hips side to side, forwards and backwards, and then switch directions of your circles. Good, now last stretch here with the wrists. Go ahead and flip the palms so that they're face up and then fingers are facing towards one another. Go ahead and draw the fingers into a fist as best as you can here. Straighten out the elbows. And then as you exhale, bend the elbows out and then lower your body down. Good, inhale to lift and exhale to lower. Doing this a few more times. Stretching out the tops of the wrists. Continuing to breathe. Good, then go ahead and tuck the toes, shake out the hands, plant the hands back down, and lift the hips for downward facing dog. Keep pressing into the palms, and then start to pedal out your downward dog, bending each knee, just stretching out the back of the legs, the hamstrings. Then go ahead and find stillness. We'll start to find spinal waves. So as you inhale, lift the heels up off of the mat. As you exhale, shift forward into plank pose. Shoulders come past the wrists and then bend the knees, hips come down, and then up, downward dog. We'll do that two more times. Lift the heels, shift into plank, shoulders past wrists, bend the knees, lift the hips, downward dog. One more time at your own pace. 
just rolling through the spine, engaging your core, and then finding downward facing dog. Nice. Keeping the legs straight, go ahead and walk to the top of the mat. Coming into ragdoll pose, bring hands to opposite elbows. Let the head and neck hang heavy. You can bend the knees here if you'd like, or you can keep them straight if you'd like a deeper stretch in the hamstrings. Feel the back of the legs lengthen, lift the hips up high, shake the head, no, not the head, yes. And then release the hands to the mat, bend the knees, and very slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae, lift yourself all the way up. Once you get standing to the top, roll the shoulders away from the ears, bring hands to heart center, close the eyes down, and just pause for a moment, reconnecting back to your breath, engaging your core, And now open the eyes. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale, palm the mat, step it back to plank. Shoulders over wrists, strong through the core. Option to come down onto the knees. So finding your variation of plank pose here and then moving through a vinyasa. So shifting your body weight forward, bending the elbows, coming into chaturanga. Inhale for your back bend, either cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good, grounding down through the left foot, lift the right leg for three-legged dog. Finding cheetah, take a big breath in, as you exhale, draw the knee to the nose, rounding through the spine. And inhale, three-legged dog. We'll find that two more times. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, extend. And exhale, round through the spine, knee to nose. Good. Inhale, extend. Now this time as you exhale, bend the knee, stack the hips, and start to roll the ankle here pressing into the hands, and then extend that leg. Step the right leg forward. Warrior two, so back foot is parallel with the back of the mat. Extend the arms out wide, gazing over the front fingers, bending into that front knee. Take a big inhale. As you exhale, reverse warrior. Left hand rests gently on the left leg bringing the right bicep to the ear. Extended side angle. A few options here. The right elbow can come onto the right leg, reaching the left arm up and over. Or you can use your block here, placing it inside of the right leg. Final option is to find a bind. So bringing that right arm underneath the right leg and the left arm around the low back, interlacing fingers here if you can. We'll hold here for three deep breaths. Shoulders are stacked. Good. On your last breath, cartwheel the arms down, coming into plank pose, and then finding your vinyasa. Meeting in downward facing dog. Grounding down into the right foot, left leg lifts, three-legged dog. Inhale, exhale, knee to nose, cheetah. Inhale, extend. Exhale, knee to nose, round through the spine. Inhale, lift. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, lift. Exhale, bend the knee, open the hip. Roll the ankle here a few times. And then extend that leg and then step the left foot forward warrior two back foot parallel with the back of the mat arms extended bending into the left knee good big breath in 
As you exhale, reverse warrior. Right hand rests gently on the right leg, left bicep to ear. Extended side angle, finding your variation. Either placing the elbow on top of the leg, using a block, or finding a bind. Keep your chest open towards the sky. Try not to collapse here. Hold for three breaths. Good. Gaze down. Cartwheel the hands. Step back to plank. And move through your vinyasa. Good job. Grounding down through the left foot. Right leg lifts. Three-legged dog. Big breath in. Exhale. Draw the right knee to the right elbow. Round through the spine. Inhale. Extend. Exhale, twist, right knee to the left elbow. Good, inhale, extend. Exhale, step the right foot forward, warrior two. Opening the arms out wide, bending into the right knee. Just holding here for one breath. And then straightening out to the right leg, placing the right hand either on the shin or using your block here for support. Stacking the shoulders, gazing up at the left hand, holding here for three breaths. Feel the stretch in the back of the right leg. Feel the left side body expand. Now we're going to transition into balancing half moon. So bending into the right knee, you can heel toe that left foot forward if you need to, either placing the right hand down in front of you or using a block for support. Place your left hand on your hip as you lift the left leg up, stacking the hip joints. Option to extend that left arm up. Balancing on the right leg here, strong in your core. One more breath. And then step that left foot back into warrior two, arms extended. And then cartwheel the hands down, step the right foot back to meet the left foot, moving through your vinyasa. Grounding down through the right leg, left leg lifts. Inhale. Exhale, left knee to left elbow. Inhale, extend. Exhale, twist, left knee, right elbow. Inhale, lift. Exhale, left foot steps forward, warrior two. One breath here. Straightening out the left leg, left hand comes down to the shin, stacking the shoulders, using a block here if you'd like. Holding for three breaths. Keep the belly engaged, keep the breath steady. Now transitioning into Balancing Half Moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Bending into the left knee, right leg lifts, placing the left hand down on the mat or on a block. Right hand can come to the hip or you can extend it out wide. Shoulders stacked, hips stacked. Take one more breath. Then bending into that left knee, Right foot comes back, warrior two. Cartwheel the hands down, set the left foot back to meet the right foot, and then move through your vinyasa. Meeting in downward facing dog, gaze at the top of the mat, step or jump to the top. Good. Inhale. Bend the knees as you reach the arms up. Chair pose. Sink the hips down. Reach the arms up. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Draw the low belly in. Strong through the legs. Strong through the core. Holding for three. For two. 
and one. Bring the hands to heart center and slowly sink the hips all the way down until you come onto the grounds. Balancing on the glutes, lifting the legs for boat pose. Keep the spine nice and tall. We're going to move through some core work here. So take a big breath in through the nose. As you exhale, find the low boat, hovering the feet and the head up off of the mat. Inhale for boat. Exhale, lower. Squeeze the core. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. So you're holding as you lower, but you're keeping the breath steady. Good. Inhale to lift up. And exhale to lower. Inhale. Exhale. Holding here and then start to flutter the feet up and down. Holding for five, four, three, two, one. Good. Lower all the way down to the ground. Extend the arms and extend the feet. Now go ahead and bend the knees and rest the arms alongside the body. We're going to come into supine crow. This is a great pose to practice to help you get an idea of the proper alignment and the exact muscles that you need to engage for this arm balance. So we're going to start by reaching the arms straight out in front. So stacking the wrists just above the shoulders, flexing the hands, spreading all 10 fingers nice and wide, just as we were doing when we were in tabletop. Now round through the upper back and then hug the knees into the chest and then bring the knees as close towards the armpits as possible. Squeeze your core, draw the low belly in towards the spine, and then lift the head and neck up off of the mat. So really rounding through the upper back, then go ahead and point the toes, bring the big toes together, and draw the heels down towards the glutes. We're going to hold here for a few deep breaths. Try to keep the breath long and steady. Good. Really squeezing your core. And then gently release. Place your hands on top of the knees and gently rock yourself up. Cross the ankles, plant the hands, and come into downward facing dog. Taking a breath here just to reset. Now from here, the right leg will lift for three-legged dog. As you exhale, step the right foot to the outside of the right hand, coming into lizard pose, but keeping the back knee lifted. Good. Gaze up. Then press into the hands. Step the right foot back, downward dog. Left leg lifts, three-legged dog. Step the left foot to the outside of the left hand. Drop the hips. Lift the gaze. Lizard pose. And then press into the hand, step the left foot back, downward facing dog. Now gaze at the top of the mat, bend the knees. We're going to jump into malasana. So you're going to jump both feet to the outside of the hands. If you'd rather walk there, that's okay too. So sinking the hips down, bringing hands to heart center, coming into malasana yoga squats. So really pressing the palms together and using your elbows to press into the knees. If you need to use a block underneath the hips for more support, you can do that. Really working on opening up the hips here, finding a nice tall spine, growing tall through the crown of the head. Good, take one more breath here. And then go ahead and plant the hands down, lift the hips up, coming into a forward fold. Just sway from side to side, releasing any tension in the upper back, in the head and neck. The next pose we're going to be coming into is our final arm balance, crow pose. So if this is your first time coming into the arm balance, you can just watch and listen to my cues. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and demo 
how you can start to get into the pose. So lowering the hips down, but keeping them lifted, keep the arms straight and start to find your spider fingers. So really pressing into the palms, spreading the fingers nice and wide. Good, using your arm strength and your core strength here. Now you wanna think chaturanga arms. So you're creating a shelf with your arms so that the knees can rest on top. Now you're going to draw the knees as close to the armpits as possible. From here, you're going to shift your body weight forward. Keep your gaze looking up. So rather than looking down at the hands, look up past the top of your yoga mat. Now from here, you can lift one leg up, set the foot back down, and then lift the opposite foot. So each time you lift one foot up, really try to squeeze your core and squeeze that heel towards your glutes. Good. Coming back into Malasana if you need a break. And then go ahead and see if you can come into the full posture. So keeping the chest lifted, keeping the gaze lifted, press into your hands, shift your body weight forward. Strong through the arms as you bring the knees in towards the elbows just on top of the triceps. Lift each foot up, hold here. So as you're lift, lifting up, you're really squeezing your core and you're squeezing your legs together. This is a posture that requires strength in your entire body. If bringing the knees on top of the triceps is too difficult, see if you can bring the knees to the outer edges of the elbows. That might help you if you're a beginner. Good, now from here I'm just going to show you how you can use a block to help you out with this pose. If you are new to it, one of the biggest fears I hear from people is that they're afraid of falling forward. So if you have a block, you can place it in front of you long ways, and you can place your forehead on top to help you build up the arm strength. So using the block to balance, you can lift each foot up off of the mats. Another way you can use your block, placing it down on your mat. If you lack the flexibility in the hamstrings to bring your knees into the triceps, you can come up onto a block and this will give you some extra added height. So from here, it will be easier for you to bring your knees into your armpits. From here, shift forward, lift the feet up, squeeze the legs, squeeze the arms together, and then slowly come back down. Whew. And if crow pose is a piece of cake for you, you've practiced it before, you want a bit more of a challenge, you can practice jumping back into chaturanga. So coming into crow pose, you'll need to lift the hips as high as you can for this, really engage the core, and then shoot the feet back into chaturanga as you bend the elbows, inhale for upward dog, exhale downward facing dog awesome work feel free to pause the video here if you want more time to play around with this arm balance it is a fun one so take as much time as you'd like when you're ready we're going to come into child's pose allowing the forehead to rest on the mat big toes together and then rest the arms alongside the body, just finding a more restorative approach. And coming back to your breath, noticing how your body feels. Taking this time to allow your heart rate to slow back down. And go ahead and slowly lift yourself up. Coming into tabletop pose will start to cool down here a little bit. Finding thread the needle as you reach the right arm up. And as you exhale, thread the right arm underneath the left arm placing your right cheek on your mat and extending the left arm in front of you. 
keeping the hips lifted, feeling just a gentle stretch in the outside of the right shoulder. Good, place your left hand down and then reach that right arm back up. Place the right hand down, switching sides, inhale, left arm comes up, exhale, thread the left arm underneath the right, left cheek comes to the mat and extending the right arm in front of you. Placing the right hand down as you reach the left arm up. Left hand comes back down. Tuck the back toes. Interlace the fingers behind your back. Hips are on top of the heels. Start to draw the fist down towards the ground, opening up the chest. This feels really nice after really working the shoulders. Lifting the chest and then coming into a forward fold, keeping the toes tucked. Bring your forehead to the mat as you extend the fists up overhead. Good, then plant the hands back down, cross the ankles, go ahead and lay all the way down onto your back. Hug the knees into the chest, finding a supine twist. So as you take a big breath in through the nose, exhale, drop the knees towards the left side of the mat, gazing over the right shoulder and extending the right arm out. As you inhale, bring the knees back to center, and then as you exhale, bring the knees over towards the right side. Take your gaze to the left. See if you can draw both shoulders down towards the ground. And bringing the knees back to center, from here, just slowly start to extend the legs, bringing the feet mat width distance apart and allowing the arms to rest alongside the body. Coming into our final resting pose. Take a big breath in through the nose, open the mouth, exhale it out. Allowing yourself to rest here in complete relaxation. If you'd like to pause the video here and take the next few minutes to rest, feel free to do so. Otherwise, whenever you're ready, just gently start to wiggle the fingers and toes. Make your way up into a comfortable seated position. Thank you so much for joining me on the mat today. I hope you enjoyed this class. If you did, let me know in the comments below. You can support this channel by liking this video and subscribing if you aren't yet already. Again, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope to see you in the next class soon. Namaste.